throws it deep downfield. Tyree who makes the catch. What a play by Manning. And what a catch by Tyree. Manning takes the snap. Lobs it left. First is wide open. Touchdown Giants. Touchdown. Deep ball down the left sideline and it's going to be caught. Was he inbounds? Yes. Manning him on the sideline. Brady heaves one down the middle of the field into the end zone. A jump ball and it's incomplete and the ball game's over and the Giants have won Super Bowl 46. Welcome to our final episode of Papa's Perspective of the 2021 season. Now, of course, it is 2022. Happy New Year, everybody. John Schmelk with Bob Papa. It's all brought to you by Bob's Discount Furniture, the official furniture store and mattress partner of the New York football Giants. Final game of the season. Giants hosting the Washington football team, Bob. And, you know, we talked with some of these previous games. It was maybe a little hard finding some games to talk about. Not the case for Washington. A lot of good giant victories against them over the past 20 or so years. Yeah, I'm wondering if, if next year if we do this, uh, will wa- the Washington football team have a new name? Oh, that's a good point. That's yes. A, a, so listen. So by the way, should we set ground rules? Like, should we refer to them as the other name because that's what they were in the past? Or should we just go Washington football team? Washington football team. Okay, I'm with now, you. Now, um, yes, if you go back to 2000, the Giants have dominated the series between these two teams. And, and a lot. A lot of the Giants' lopsided wins have come against Washington. And as a matter of fact, even during the Giants' dark era, which this has been, you know, as far as their win-loss record, they've had a mastery over Washington, although they did lose to Washington down in Washington earlier in the 2021 season, a game in which they let slip away. But we go back to happier times. We're going to look at just a couple of games, John, of games that were played at home against Washington. So, We're going to start on September the 4th of 2008. And obviously this was a very festive time for the Giants. They were raising the banner. Uh, They were getting the Super Bowl celebration, the Thursday night game. They had just beaten the Patriots in Super Bowl 42. And, you know, I'll never forget the Strahan popping out of the Lombardi trophy, you know, like uh, someone popping out of a cake. There was the sidebar to this about Plexico Burris wanting a new contract. He got a new deal. You know, there had been some animosity between him and the organization as far as him trying to get his deal done. But uh, he stepped up and came up big in this game for the Giants. But really, the story of this game was the Giants' ability to run the football. They had 154 yards rushing in this game. They hit on their third downs. And, um, you know, this was that celebration. And Washington was the perfect foil for the Giants to have. And, you know, right out of the gate, um, the was, Giants won the coin toss. Was this the first Thursday night game that did, like, the Super Bowl celebration from the year before? Might have been, right? It might have been the first Thursday night one. Yeah, it's might might have been the first one where they made it a Thursday night kind of standalone, big celebration kind of thing on NBC. So the Giants, they win the coin toss. Um, again, you know, it's not that long ago, but back then teams won the coin toss and they elected to receive and the giants right out of the gate, got things going after Manning hit Steve Smith on an eight yarder on a third and seven went up top to his big play threat. Manning back to throw pumps, looks lobs one down the left side. He's got Burris wide open on the sideline to the 40 and knocked out of bounds at the Redskid 39 yard line gain of 31 to Plexico Burris. who's just signed a two-year contract extension today. Well, obviously, the highlights are going to use the old yeah. name. We can't really help that, can we? <laughs> no. Uh, and Plaxico uh, was happy. He got his deal done. The Giants hit a third and six to Burris again. And then they had the ball with a first and goal ready to score. They've gone 83 yards on the drive. I set with Jacobs. Booth in is a tackle eligible left. Manning over center. Redskins show blitz. Manning back to throw. He's going to roll right. Manning's going to run. He cuts back at the one. Dive for the goal line. Touchdown, Eli Manning. He's breaking out his Super Bowl moves with the nifty feet. So the Giants take a 7-0 lead. You listen to the background sound, John. Giants Stadium just had a different sound. It did, yeah. You know, because it was much smaller than MetLife Stadium, just a, on a footprint, and it was a lot more cement, and, you know, you had the closed quarters. The sound just stayed in there. It just it had trapped a, the noise inside, yeah. Yeah, and it just had a whole different sound to it. So the Giants have a 7 nothing lead. Washington goes three and out. Tuck had a sack. 
Um, so then the Giants get the ball back, and again, putting together a nice drive, and the running game just was a big factor of this football team. In fact, this was kind of a harbinger of things to come because the Giants would be one of the most prolific teams uh, in the NFL running the football in 2008 on their way to the number one seed. And this Brandon Jacobs run just sort of typified what the Giants were all about. Manning, handoff left, Jacobs tries to bounce it left, finds his way through a crease, inside the 20, fighting down to the 15-yard line before he's finally tackled there. 17 yards for Brandon Jacobs. This offense is doing what they do best. They are physically imposing their will on the defense. And when you get Brandon Jacobs in the open field, he just plows over to safety. I think that was LaRon Landry. This is what gets this offense energized. And LaRon Landry, if you remember, he was like the big jacked up, like big hitting safety, and Brandon Jacobs was having no part of it. No, and, and listen, that set the tone for the season. Again, the Giants wound up being the number one seed. Look, they were the best team over the course of this season in a lot of ways um, until the Plexico Burris incident. Um, they were, you know, kicking butt, taking names. And really, if that Plexico thing doesn't happen, this team's probably going to go back-to-back and win the Super Bowl. But anyway, the Giants got a field goal, 10 nothing lead. Uh, that's where we stood, you know, the Giants driving the ball, running the ball. They kick another field goal. They go up 13 nothing running the ball, driving the ball, hitting third downs, uh, red zone failures, but they settle for another field goal, John Carney, so it's 16 nothing. Now, Washington does score late in the first half. Jason Campbell hits Santana Moss on a 12-yard touchdown pass. So the giant lead, despite this domination, is 16-7. to So, you know, you're sitting there and you're like, all right, can you put this game away? Can you put this game away? The third quarter, there's no scoring. Um, and in the fourth quarter, there was no scoring. Um, and you know, any time that Washington tried to move the ball, the Giants' defense would hold them back. Um, I think it was a game that left you wanting a little bit more because the Giants didn't score more points. But I think the die was cast on that opening night of the season that this team was going to be very tough to beat. Um, you know, you take a look at the final numbers. Brandon Jacobs had 116 yards rushing. Uh, Derek Ward had 39 yards rushing. They averaged 4.8 yards per carry. Burris had 10 catches for 133 yards. And that was the recipe for this Giants team. And they wound up winning the game 16-7. to All right, Bob, now let's jump ahead. We're going to go to 2012, the year after the Giants' second Super Bowl championship under Tom Coughlin. Yeah, and again, I thought the Giants were a good team in 2012. And, uh, you know, you sometimes wonder, this was their first look at RG3, okay? This is October the 21st, 2012 at MetLife Stadium. And, you know, you want to see what RG3 is all about because he's dynamic. He can run. Well, the, And the league, by the way, Bob, like the whole read option thing, like when I say brand new to the NFL, it was brand new to the NFL. Like the entire – like defensive intelligentsia of the NFL was still trying to figure out how to stop this thing with him and Alfred Morris. Correct, because it was like a souped-up version of the Wildcat. And, um, you know, Alfred Morris that season went over 100 yards twice against the Giants. He had 120 yards rushing in this game. RG3 was 20 of 28 for 258 yards. Eli threw for 337. Victor Cruz had 131 yards receiving. The Giants didn't run the ball worth a lick in this football game. Which, by the way, was the case for most of that 2012 season. And even, quite frankly, most of the 2011 season until it got better in the postseason. Yeah, I mean, this is where we started to see the uh, deterioration of that great Giants offensive yep. line. So, uh, first quarter, um, Giants get the ball first. They get it into Washington territory. They have to punt the football away. Now, Washington starts at their own five-yard line. And they put together this drive. Uh, they convert a third and one. Alfred Morris goes for two. Third and three, RG3 throws a pass. Um, they wiggled out of a first and 15. Third and four, um, RG3 completes a pass. And they're just chewing up clock. This is a 17 play, nine minute and 11 second drive. And they got the ball first and goal at the three, but the Giants' defense stiffens. 
including on third down. Third and goal to two. Hankerson wide to the right. Two receivers tight left. Robert Griffin the third will work over center. Royster the tailback. He takes the snap. He's back to throw. He looks right, pumps. Now he rolls to his left. Feels pressure. Being chased. Now just keeps it out of the back of the end zone. Incomplete. Foley and Pierre Paul applied the pressure. So that drive results in a Kai Forbath 21-yard field goal. But, man, do the Giants need some Gatorade at this point. They got to hydrate because that was a long time-consuming drive. Uh, if I remember, it was, a, it was a sunny day at MetLife Stadium. It wasn't, like, brutally hot or anything, but I remember the Giants just looking gas. So they need the offense to do something um, just so they can get a blow. And they pick up a first down, and then they have a big third and one. And you don't want to put the football right back to Washington. You're trying to regroup a little bit, and Eli Manning comes up big. Third and one for the Giant 48. Manning calls signals. Bennett in motion to the right. Back to throw goes Manning. Sets. He's got Bennett downfield. And he makes the catch after taking a hit at the 21-yard line. Gain of 30 to Martellus Bennett. Yeah, Martellus Bennett came up big on that play. Uh, The Giants hit a big third and seven at the Washington eight-yard line. Akeem Nix had a seven-yard catch, uh, which was big for the Giants. And then... That set up an opportunity to take the lead. Second and goal from the one. Brown and an eye set with Hynoski. No receivers in the game. Pascal in motion to the right. Comes back to the left. Hand off Brown. He dies. Hit by Fletcher. It bounces in for the touchdown. Andre Brown makes it 7-3 for the Giants. Um, but again, you know, the Giants are trying to figure out Alfred Morris and RG3. This is the first time they're playing them. And Morris goes for 15 yards on this drive. Griffin has a 23-yard pass. And Washington is just outside the red zone. And RG3 strikes. Third and seven at the Giant 26. Hankerson wide left. Santanaos in motion to the left. Royster to the left of RG3. Takes the snap, little bubble screen for Moss. He's got room to the 20. He's to the 15, he's to the 10, and he goes in untouched. 26 yards for Santana Moss out of the left slot. So that gave Washington the lead, 10-7. And, again, he's just kind of watching this game. You're like, man, the Giants are going to have to deal with RG3 and Alfred Morris twice a year for the next decade. Obviously, (laughs) that didn't happen. Giants get the ball back. They hit a third and four as Eli Manning uses his legs for five. But the drive stalls in the red zone. And Lawrence Tyne's field goal ties the game up at 10. So um, here comes Washington right back at it. And again, RG3, how do you stop him? Uh, This is pre-injury. This is him taking the league by storm. And after the Giants tie it on the first play from scrimmage, it's like, uh uh-oh, here we go. First and 10 Redskins at their own 48 with the right hash mark where the ball is spotted. He's got twin protectors and the pistol. Hand off Morris. Works right, runs out of a tackle. He's to the 40, 35, 30. Knocked out of bounds by Brown at the Giants 23. Call it the 22, and it's another 28-yard run. Back-to-back 28-yard runs. Yeah, think about it. RG3 for 28, Alfred Morris for 30. Like, how do you stop it? Well, how do you stop it? You get pressure on the quarterback. Morris in motion to the left. Robert Griffin the third call signals. Giants a little confused. Takes the snap. He's back to throw. He's under pressure. Sack. Back at the 26-yard line. Justin Tuck gets his first sack of the season. It's a loss of nine. And that set up a Kai Forbath field goal to give Washington a 13-10 lead. So Eli Manning, who the year before had all those fourth-quarter comebacks and all those great drives and always able to respond, does respond here. The Giants start at their own 20 with 149 to go in the half. And um, third and two, he hits Bennett for 12 with 124 to go. Third and three, he hits Knicks for five. Um, And the Giants are able to get points at the end of the half to get the game tied up. Tines is set. Snap is good. 
kick on its way. It's drifting right. Will it hook? It does. It hooks inside the right upright and is good. Little draw from Lawrence Tynes. And with two seconds to go in the half, we're tied at 13. Yeah, and before that, Cruz had back-to-back catches for 13 and 14 yards, which got the Giants in field goal position. So, unlike with this year, the way things are going for the Giants, they scored points at the end of the half. They got that game tied up. So, we go to the third quarter. And here's where the game starts to get wild. They trade a couple possessions. Washington and then the Giants. A couple of punts. And now uh, Washington has the football, and um, they get called for a personal foul penalty. So they're facing a first and 23, and this is kind of where all hell breaks loose in the game. Shotgun set for Robert Griffin the third. Now Morgan comes set behind him. Handoff. Morris over the football, and the Giants have it at the 39. Morris coughs it up for the first time this season. And the Giants have the football. First turnover of the game. Yeah, Michael Boley recovers the fumble, but a couple plays later with the Giants driving, they give it right back. Manning calls the signals. Drops straight back to throw. Sets, looks right, throws right in the pass. Intercepted by the Redskins. Wilson on the pick. And he's knocked down at the 16. And again, Carl, the ball sailed on Manning. It looked like he had Bennett wide open at the 10. So it sails on Eli. Uh, So Washington takes over. They start to move the ball. But again, they decide, no, you take it. He'll throw this time at a fake. Over the middle. Intercepted by Stevie Brown. Threw it right to him. Up the left sideline. Across midfield. To the 40-yard line. And tackled at the Redskin 35. Stevie Brown gets his third interception. And on three straight possessions, we've had turnovers. You know, Bob, I should have looked it up. Uh, I think what he finished with the year was, what, eight interceptions? Yeah, he had a a big year, yeah. It was just one of those, you know, sometimes with players each year, the ball, there's like a magnet for the football. That's what it was for Stevie Brown. A lot of those interceptions, it wasn't like he was like breaking in front of receivers to go grab picks. It was deflection right to Stevie Brown. Air mail right to Stevie Brown. It was unbelievable. Yeah, and that was one of those. That was definitely one of those. Um, so he returns at 41 yards. So the Giants start in Washington territory. Dominic kicks in a big 19-yard catch. Bradshaw with a six-yard run. Uh, and then on a third and two, I remember Manning hit Cruz on a short game, but it got the Giants first down, and then a couple plays later, the Giants take the lead. Hynoski in an eye set, second and goal at the one. Hino! Bradshaw the tailback. Hand off to Mott Bradshaw. Powers right, and he's in! Touchdown! The official on the far side said he broke the plane. He did, and the Giants led 20-13. to 13. So Washington's coming back. Morris for eight, you know, and Washington's getting in that rhythm again, but now the Giants' defense makes a couple plays. First and ten for the Redskins at their own 44. Play fake. Robert Griffin the third back to pass, and he's going to get sacked by Jason Pierre-Paul, who throws him to the ground back at the 32-yard line. And he does a little gangnam style dance. Side. From the shotgun, Robert Griffin the third with Morris behind him. Kingdom style. <laughs> Takes the snap. Play fake. He's back to throw. He pumps. He's going to get sacked again. Back at the 43-yard line. OCU Minura gets in the act. His third sack of the season. First and 10 at the Giants 27. Giants by 7, 20 to 13. Fake handoff, and he fumbles the football. Recovered by the Giants. Linval Joseph's got it. He ran a little fake, and Robert Griffin the third coughed it up. You go back to these games, Bob, and we just going through these play-by-plays. How many of these drives get ended by sacks? Yeah, a lot of them, or turnovers created by sacks. I mean, but it just shows you how like how important creating those type of negative plays are for a defense. And well, they certainly did it, which is why they to say, <laughs> which is why they were able to win a lot of these games that we're looking back on. So the Giants. Get a couple sacks, a forced fumble. They got a seven-point lead. There's seven minutes to go in the game. So now they need a nice drive, take time off the clock, and let's kind of 
put the air out of this thing. But on the very next play. Oops. Yeah. Giants line up in a power eye. Strong formation to the right. Bradshaw the tailback. Now Eli audibilizes at the line with 10 on the play clock. They stay in the eye set. Manning back to throw. And he throws it left and it's intercepted by Rob Jackson. Intended for Knicks. You can hear the shock in my voice. Because remember, this is coming off 2011. And, you know, Eli working his magic and being so clutch, especially in fourth quarters. Bob, that was like literally maybe the best fourth quarter season. He had 19 touchdowns that year, I believe, just in fourth quarter. It was ridiculous. Yeah. So, like, I'm shocked that he did that because it's the last thing I expected. So, Washington gets a short field, but the Giants hold him to three. So, the Giants lead it 20 to 16. Five minutes to go in the game, but Manny gets sacked right out of the gate. Um, the Giants do not convert a third and one. So they have to punt the ball away. And Washington, you know, has an opportunity here. Now, can the Giants end this football game right around the two-minute warning? Um, they stop them on second and ten. They stop them on third and ten. One more stop, and the game is yours. Redskins are two for two on fourth downs. Fourth and one and a fourth and two. This is a fourth and ten with 2.07 to go. Takes the snap. Back to throw is RG3. He's under pressure. He's going to run to his left. Chased by Pierre Paul. Nowhere to go. Now Jukes once. Throws it over the middle and completes it to the 40-yard line in a first down. It was an incredible play. I'm just, I'm, I remember thinking to myself, how are they going to defend this guy for the next ten years? I mean, it was awesome to watch. So they convert that, and then with a minute 38 to go, RG3 hooks up with Santana Moss on a 30-yard touchdown. And I'm like, wow, the Giants are going to actually lose to Washington. But not so fast. Because there's 127 to go in the game. Giants are down 23-20. And, you know, how do you not believe in Eli in these spots? And how do you not believe in what they can do with big plays when they need it? We saw it the year before, and Eli Manning channels his 2011 with Victor Cruz. Second and 10 from the Giant 23. Two receivers right, Manning back to throw. Steps up, deep ball down the middle of the field. He's got Cruz, 35, 30, 20, 10, 5, touchdown Giants! 73 yards! And the Giants have the lead back. Salsa time at MetLife Stadium. Victor Cruz, what can you say? I mean, it was like, you you, you know, you, you felt like it was 2011 again. So the Giants have the lead, but, you know, with the way RG3 was carving up the Giants with his legs and his arm, because he had a rocket of an arm, you know, you're, you're sitting there pins and needles. Like, can the Giants stop him from driving down the field and scoring? Well, they do. Robert Griffin III sends Moss in motion to the right in the slot. Takes the snap back to throw. Over the middle, Moss makes the catch. Move on the football, it's loose. Giants say they have it at the 43, and they do. Moss coughed it up. Recovered by Hosley. Chase Blackburn forced the fumble. He had forced a fumble a couple plays earlier uh, that Washington wound up recovering. But this time, J. Ron Hosley recovers it. And the Giants win a wild one, 27-23. And, Bob, I looked it up just for posterity's sake. Eli Manning in the fourth quarter in 2011. 122 completions and 194 attempts. That's 63%, which now people are like, 63%. That's not very good. Well, back then, 63% was actually pretty good. Well, and also the Giants' offense was a deep ball offense. To your point, average depth of target of almost 11 yards, which is very, very high. 104.6 quarterback rating. 1,735 yards just in fourth quarters. 15 touchdowns and six interceptions. 
That's why he was the Super Bowl MVP that year. <laughs> just, th- just think about those numbers. Yeah, I mean, listen, uh, I mean, Eli was phenomenal, especially in crunch time. The thing that I remember about that game was, you know, the Giants, they worked their late game magic. And as it turned out, that was a very frustrating year because the Giants would go on to lose a game in Washington later that year, uh, the first weekend of December, 1716. And, you know, had they won that game, the Giants would have won the NFC East and been in the playoffs. Instead, Washington beat them. After the Giants beat the Saints, they got shut out in Atlanta, beaten in Baltimore. Then they won their regular season finale, but it was too little too late. They finished 9-7 and seven and didn't make the playoffs. But had they beaten Washington, they would have had the sweep. They would have won the division. And I'll never forget when they that game down in Washington, they had like 8 million chances in the last five minutes of the game. They kept getting across midfield, get called for a false start, get called for a hold, drop a pass, you know, blowing a, sign, a negative run. And I remember after the game, a lot of the guys were talking about, you know, hey, look, we're the defending Super Bowl champions. You know, we'll come back next week. We'll get this thing fixed. They never got it really fixed. And to me, that was... That was just a tough way to end the season. Yeah, 2010, 2012 were very similar, where both teams were probably good enough to be playoff teams. And, you know, you got Eli in the postseason, anything can happen. And just neither team, you know, made enough plays and, and, you know, basically didn't win enough and not make enough mistakes to shoot themselves in the foot to make the playoffs those two years. Yeah, I mean, listen, I mean, fans that are listening to this right now that are living through this year, they would take nine and seven in a heartbeat. Right. Um, But. I didn't think the 10 team or the 12 team were teams that would make a run to win the Super Bowl. It felt like they had holes and flaws. I agree. Uh, Maybe the 10 team more than the 12 team. Then again, heading into the 2011 playoffs, I'm not sure how many of us really thought that team was going to make a run either, given how poorly their defense had played and how they couldn't run the ball either. Yeah, but the way they played the last two games of that season, I felt pretty confident. And then when they beat Atlanta and put a two spot up on the board, I felt pretty confident about that. But I guess the 10 team was probably better than the 12 team. Um, But neither one made the playoffs because of late season losses, self-inflicted losses. Um, and now 10-6 and six and 9-7 and seven is almost going to make you the playoffs every year now with the expanded playoffs. Right. Um, well, you got to add a game to that, too. Oh, good point. Right. Um, the 08, we started this with 08. That team should have won a Super Bowl. All right, we yep. got one more game to look at. We'll go back to the 2020 season at MetLife Stadium. The Giants win a tight one, 20-19 in the football game. I mean, Daniel Jones, 112 yards passing. But his legs were a big factor. He had 74 yards running in the game. And they limited Washington to 86 yards rushing. Uh, Kyle Allen was the quarterback uh, for Washington in that game at MetLife Stadium, which must feel like a lifetime ago. But the Giants did win it 20-19. to So uh, here's some of the things I remember about this game. Riverboat Ron, right? Ron Rivera. He is not scared to take chances. And... Um, Right out of the gate, first quarter, opening possession of the game, Riverboat Ron rolls the dice. Fourth and one at the Giants 48, opening possession of the game. Allen takes the snap, handoff Barber, pushes his way right, and he dives ahead, and he's got the first down to the Giant 46. So they go for it right out of the gate, and uh, they keep the drive alive, but the Giant defense stiffens. And it forces Washington into a field goal attempt. Hopkins is set. Snap is good. Placement. Kick on its way. It's got the distance. And it is no good. So I missed it wide to the right. Yeah, so no score. Um, And then the Giants get the ball. And, you know, remember, Saquon Barkley's out for the year at this point. So they're using a lot of different running backs, including Devontae Freeman. Calling out signals is Jones. One back set is Freeman. Hand off Freeman, makes the first man miss, accelerates left. Freeman dances away, makes another man miss at the 30, and finally tackled from behind at the Washington 28-yard line. But that's a gain of 14 for Freeman, and it was nifty. 
Yeah, and that was after Ingram and had a 21-yard catch. Um, Giants have it deep in Washington territory and trying to convert a third down. Jones calling out the protection. Takes the snap back to throw. Steps up, has time. Now he's going to get hit, and he's going to get sacked. Back at the 15-yard line. Ryan Kerrigan got the sack, but the Giants get points on the board. Gano to try a 33-yard field goal. Dixon to hold. Gano is set. Snap is good. Kick on its way. And it is good. 3.23 to go in the first. Giants three, Washington nothing. Gano could have been to the Pro Bowl last year. Could have been to the Pro Bowl this year. Uh, he's been fantastic. So Washington gets the ball back, and on their second play of the drive, they turn it over. Allen in a shotgun set. Play fake to Gibson. Back to throw. Fastball over the middle. Intercepted by Bradbury. At the 45. Cuts to the 40. Inside the 30. Now comes left and gets hit from behind and tackled at the Washington 27-yard line. And Bradbury was so good in 2020 on his way to the Pro Bowl. Sets up a short field. Uh, the Giants start the possession at the Washington 27. Need to convert a third down, though. Jones out of the gun. They bring a pressure up the middle. He lobs one down the left side for Slayton, who makes the catch for the touchdown. What a gorgeous throw by Daniel Jones. Over the shoulder, Darius Slayton with the Giant touchdown. So the Giants get a touchdown, and they take the lead, 10-zip. Now, Washington tries to answer back. Um, they got a drive going. They got the ball in Giants territory uh, at the Giant 23, and Leonard Williams makes a play to get things going. Allen rolls back to throw. He's under pressure. He's going to get slammed down and sacked back at the 38-yard line by Leonard Williams. So Leonard Williams gets the sack. Um, the Giants made a mistake, though, because on third and 24, McLaurin gets 20, which sets up a makeable field goal for Hopkins. He hits from 35, so the Giants were up 10-3. Uh, again, I mentioned the Giants' leading rusher in this game was their quarterback, who got the next drive started off in fine fashion. Jones had a shotgun, came into his left. Hand off. No, Jones is going to keep it and run. Runs off the left side of the 40. Foot race across midfield, 40. 30 and finally knocked out of bounds at the Washington 26 yard line. Bob, by far my favorite part of the Giants getting a quarterback that can run it because you just hadn't called many of these before <laughs> that year. Daniel Jones fooled you so many times on those keepers. That one you were pretty on, but there were other ones you'd be like, hey, runs left. No, wait, it's Jones. There yeah. he goes. Hey, listen, he. he... Listen, he's good with that ball fake. Yeah. And it's very deceptive. And he had so many. Big runs during the course of the 2020 season. Giants have it first and goal at the six. But they actually go backward. So they have to send out Graham Gano again. Snap, spot, kick on its way and drilled right through. 6.15 to go here in the first half. Giants 13, Washington 3. So the Giants have a 10-point lead. Um, Washington puts together a drive, but the Giant defense... Forces Washington to punt with 120 to go in the half, but a mistake on special teams. Way to punt it. Giants got pressure. Way got knocked down. There's a flag in there. As the ball's going to get down at the half yard line. Oh boy, that is such a late flag there. The the actual the punter did not get hit at all. So is it a five yarder? Let's see. I don't think that's rough. Running into the kicker. Defense. Five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. So, running into the kicker. So, now it's fourth and four. And, again, Riverboat Ron rolling the dice. Snap. He's going to throw. Back to pass. Rolls right under pressure. Avoids the sack. Chased by Martinez. Throws it back over the middle and completes it to the Giants' 25-yard line. Yeah, Inman with the catch. So the Giants give up a run. They run into the punter. They could have had the ball back. Then they give up a fourth and four. And with just seconds to go in the half, Washington pulls to within three. Allen 
Drops back to throw. He's going to lob one left for Logan Thomas, who makes the catch and he gets his feet in. Yes, for the touchdown. Over Love. Boy, it's good coverage by Love. Better catch and better throw. So the Giants are controlling this game, but they, they don't have, you know, a representative lead to show for it. I mean, it's 13 to 10 at the half. Uh, third quarter starts. They swap a bunch of possessions. Um, but now the Giants put together a really nice drive. Um, Freeman converts a third and one. I mean, they're just they're churning. They're using clock. Uh, they're running it. Slayton had an 18-yard catch in this thing. Caden Smith converted a third and one with a catch. Um, on a third and two, uh, Wa- Washington gets called for a penalty. So it sets up first and goal for the Giants as they try to salt this game away. Play fake. Jones back to throw. Sidearms it back corner of the end zone, and it's nearly intercepted. And is it by Fuller? Yes, for a touchback. A diving interception in the back of the end zone. Jones, I think, was trying to throw it away as he was under pressure. I remember, Bob, that was a hell of a play by Fuller. Just got, I think, his one knee hit before he went out of bounds. It was a great play. It was a heck of a play. It was a mistake by Daniel Jones, though. If you're going to throw it away, throw it away. Make sure you really throw it away. And he gave Fuller an opportunity. So, again, like the Giants can't, they can't close the door on this thing. Um, Washington gets the ball back here in the fourth quarter. Uh, Kyler Fackrell gets called for a roughing the passer. So that gives Washington 15 yards. Um, on a third and six, it looked like the Giants had Allen stop. Upon review, he got the first down. Another third and six, he hits Inman again. So Washington has it in the red zone, but the Giants' defense tightens up, holding Washington to a field goal attempt. Hopkins to try a field goal from 28 yards off the right hash. Way to hold. Snap is good, kick on its way, and it is through. And with 8.56 to go, we are tied at 13. Tied up at 13, so now can the Giants respond? Well, they don't. Um, they they pick up a first down. They convert a third and 10 to Golden Tate, but they have to punt. So Washington gets the ball, and um, they start moving it. They hit a third and five. Inman again. Inman had a bunch of catches on third down. A 10-yarder. So now it's third and nine in Giants territory. And here's where the game completely flips. Third and nine at the Giants 45 with 3.41 to go. Tied at 13. Back to throw is Allen. Under pressure. And he lost the football. It's loose on the ground and picked up by the Giants. Tay Crowder's running with it. 10-5. Touchdown, Giants. Kyler Fackrell got the sack, the force fumble. Rookie Tay Crowder with a 43-yard return for a touchdown to give the Giants the lead. 3.29 to go in the game. Again, the Giants give up a third down. McLaurin this time. Then a third and seven. McKissick for 13 yards. And Washington has the ball in Giants territory. Uh, And they are moving the football. They're picking up eight yards here, six yards there. There's 43 seconds to go in the game. Giants lead by seven. And uh, the Giant defense gives up a big play. Allen takes the snap, slides left, deep ball into the end zone, and it's caught for the touchdown by Cam Sims. His first career touchdown catch. So Cam Sims with 43 seconds to go with the touchdown catch. So, all right, they're going to kick the extra point. Overtime. We're going to be tied at 20. There's 30-something seconds to go in the game, and we're probably going to be going to overtime. But, no, Riverboat Ron decides, I'm going to roll the dice on the road and try to end this thing. Allen calls out signals, takes the snap. He's back. He's flushed to his left. He's running. Looking to run, now stops. Now under pressure, he just throws it in the end zone, incomplete. Looking for Terry McLaurin. Good defense by the Giants there. Uh, As bad as they played the previous play, letting Sims get the touchdown, they played the two-point conversion beautifully. Uh, The Giants were able to take a knee, and they win this heart uh, thriller 20-19. to And, Bob, you know, 
that was one of those games where you sit there and you're like, well, you know what? Made some plays at the end. You got a couple of stops. You know, maybe you might have something here. And, of course, the team did show progress, but obviously didn't get where they wanted to go. No, I mean, they made a run down the stretch, and uh, obviously Washington wound up winning the division last year, uh, despite the fact that, you know, the Giants beat them, but uh, beat them twice during the course of the season. Um, But, you know, They've had some interesting games against Washington, and um, including the game earlier this year down in uh, FedEx Field where they had a zillion opportunities to close it out and didn't. But that's a look back at some of the home games that the Giants have had against Washington. We'll see if they can add uh, to our next installment with an impressive performance in the season finale. Yeah, and we don't know. I mean, we think we might do this again next year. We haven't really talked about it, but if we don't, Thank you so much to everybody for being with us. I had a lot of fun doing this, Bob. I think you did too as well, right? Yeah, it's a nice walk down memory lane, and uh, hopefully all the Giants fans enjoyed looking back at some of the cool moments in some of these rivalries. That's our final installment for this season of Papa's Perspective, brought to you by Bob's Discount Furniture, the official furniture store and mattress partner of the New York Football Giants. For Bob Papa, I'm John Schmelk. Thank you for being with us all season long. We'll see you next time on the Papa's Perspective podcast on the Giants Huddle podcast feed.